Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today I am slightly losing my voice, but nonetheless, we are taking the BMW M3 competition over to Topaz to get started with the paint protection film. Now, I think you guys could have seen this coming. A new Shmi Mobile, a car at the moment with about 40 miles on the clock, having picked it up from BMW Park Lane a couple of days ago, not driving it since because I want to protect the Isle of Man green paintwork. I want to keep this car looking incredible so we're going to be doing the front end and sills paint protection film starting today taking it over for the short drive to Topaz detailing where many of the Schmiermobiles have been before I think the car will go through the wash bay will start the PPF process but there's also something very special being delivered there today which fingers crossed we're going to be able to see as well for the moment let's hop on board the M3 and take it over to Topaz Last year, when I had the BMW M8 competition, I learned something with that car, which is probably no surprise, but after it had driven about 10,000 kilometers, which is around 6,000 miles, and I had it over here in London in the storage with some of my other cars, I was looking at some of the stone chips it had picked up at the front, having not done PPF. And with BMW's notoriously soft paint, I figured I was not gonna let that happen again. So other than collecting the car and a short little drive in central London, I have not yet taken it out again at all until today to take it over to Topaz to protect the Isle of Man green paint. So it is going to be getting what they call the front end and sills effectively, all of the vulnerable components at the front, the side sills, mirrors, and those kind of things. But this is looking fantastic, particularly down here in the garage when you can see all the ambient lighting, the green lighting against the silver stone. I do really like the color scheme of this car. I'm very much looking forward to a short little drive over with it now, the beginning of many things to come. I've parked it a touch out from the wall to actually be able to climb in because unlike say the M4 it doesn't have the pillarless windows which means that pressing and holding the unlock button to put the windows down is of no assistance to be able to climb into this car just a little bit easily so let's squeeze on in and again I do apologize for the complete loss of my voice at the moment clearly I need a little bit more sleep but we've got 40 miles on the clock so let's get it started and then let's head straight on over to go to Topaz. The first challenge with this car is actually to get out of the garage because despite being a smaller BMW, and yes, I know it's not small compared to older BMW models and older M3s in particular, but it does not have the tightest of turning circles. So to get it out of the garage is actually a bit of shuffling backwards and forwards, which I probably wasn't expecting. I've got quite used to the Taycan down here, which is a huge thing, but has rear wheel steering, which just makes it a touch easier. Anyway, slow and steady does it. We will take it over for the short little run. The main plan with this car over the next year or so is basically to use it as the daily for going slightly further out of town. So the Taycan will be very much my back and forth to the Schmuseum from home, around town, shorter journeys where EV charging and the infrastructure is not a problem. The G, oh, nice Nissan GTR, R35 going past. The G is for practical stuff, lugging things around, towing cars, whatever it might be. And then this, I suppose, along with the AMG GTR Roadster, are gonna be the, is gonna be the car that I drive perhaps more often on more of the heading out somewhere to go film videos, going to visit family, whatever it might be, a couple of hundred miles being driven a day, or of course at some point, hopefully taking it on a road trip over to Germany, when you can of course, and a compulsory lap of the Nürburgring. There are a few new cars in the garage which are yet to do laps of the Nürburgring, so hopefully we'll be able to sort that out before too long. For now though, it is very much a leisurely gentle stroll with this, with the assisted driving, so it has the automated steering as well as adaptive cruise and everything that makes life super, super easy, even if you're driving like this pretty slowly in traffic in town. Anyway, not too far to go. We'll get it into the wash bay first and see what's going on. It's been a fair while now since I was last out here with the guys at Topaz, but in the sunshine, this color, the Isle of Man green, is looking immense. The very, very strong, bold, metallic green, and to be fair to BMW, the finishing quality is actually pretty decent to begin with on this. But of course, we are gonna be protecting it, the vulnerable areas, perhaps also the carbon roof. We'll look to see if we can make sure that can prevent getting any damage, and this is a particularly vulnerable lip as well, sticking out, obviously with stones that could potentially be flying up from the front and maybe the diffuser will have a full run through with the guys inside but the paint color is just lovely really and truly it's funny when you're in the garage you get almost a boom out of that engine 
engine. Obviously, like that in normal quieter modes, it's not exactly the loudest thing. But we'll pull it straight into the wash bay. The guy's getting immediately to it, which is quite exciting. There is definitely a very distinct look to the new M3 and the M4, of course, as well. But into the famed wash bay it comes where many of the Shmimobiles have been before. Of course, this isn't how it originally was here at Topaz, but with the new unit and the newer capabilities all built completely for purpose to run us through the motions. First up, to rinse down the wheels. The wheels will get a good run over and the arches go through the world's effectively best preparation to get the car ready for paint protection film. Obviously it's important to make sure that there are no contaminants underneath the surfaces, in the edges, with cars that have been transported or stored who knows where since they were assembled. Even though it hasn't really done all that many miles, you do want to make sure that it is in absolutely tip-top shape ready for this. The wheels get their full proper treatment. This includes using the right tools and brushes to get in behind the calipers, to make sure to go through all of the different spokes, to get the inside of the barrels, to basically go completely through them. Because of course, a lot of dirt accumulates and you don't want that to be transferring over to the PPF later. So a thorough, thorough clean inside and out for all of the wheels. Of course, these now get a rinse down going through them thoroughly, including going around the arches. And you notice that the M3 actually sits quite low. It's not all that much space around the wheels. Part of it starts, how it looks, just a really, really cool shape overall. It is snow foam time, which is always a lot of fun to see. This is all about loosening anything that might be remaining in the paddle gaps, all loose contaminants. And it just so happens to look very cool in the process. <laughs> quite literally, like we're out in the middle of a snowstorm, which is um, always quite entertaining. Followed by the rinse down over the entire car, going back to green slowly. <laughs> the next part of this process is to use the Iron X, the fallout, which I always find quite fun, because basically if there is anything left on the surface, you get this purple blood effect after a couple of minutes when it dissolves and then starts to fall effectively off the car. Being brand new, we shouldn't see too much of that on this particular car, but given it has, like I said, been parked outside at various occasions, it might have something. We'll see in a couple of minutes when it's had time to do its magic. The good news in this instance is that there isn't really anything to show because the car has only been built so recently and then delivered straight on through. So no purple blood this time around, now just a rinse to remove it all. I actually really like that view of the M3 at the back. Very distinct BMW M with the quad tailpipes. It's a cool looking car all around. Next up comes around through many of the panel gaps and areas where you could have some things remaining, just using a fine brush to make sure that all the different parts could be pulled out. As you can see, every different gap around the headlights, around through the towing eye cover, the grille, and those various parts as well. Moving on then, we get to the more traditional part of the car wash process, in this case, shampooing, going over the entirety of the exterior, body, windows, etc to shampoo it properly before another rinse, all working through the motions. Then to go through some of the more awkward areas and lower sections, a specific sponge is used for the purpose. Let's go beneath all of the awkward parts. The next rinse down, but look at how wide those arches are, those rear arches on the M3. That shape is awesome. A run over now with the clay bar, although given the car is in such good shape, effectively this is picking up nothing. The bar looks completely Brand new, even after going over some of the panels, but just to make sure that everything is perfect. The drying process is the towels and also the airline, going through the hard parts of the wheels. Apologies, it's quite loud, but making sure it's fully dry to go into the workshop. Now commences a bit of a shuffle around then to swap some of the cars. This is looking fantastic. Honestly, I'm so pleased with the colour. Just the start of the process. That was a very nice Ferrari V12 starting up in the background. So, a bit of a shuffle around then, and then that will go into the workshop. He says, just spotting some nice Lambos lurking over towards the background there. And um, yeah, we'll go and see what else is going on. Rolling on through then to the corner bay where this car is going to be worked on for the paint protection film. We'll see a little bit of this process today in terms of the work that's going to be done to get it ready. 
Should be quite a swift, smooth process, I think, when it comes to this one. There's been a little bit of prep work to the car, so taking things off, like the number plate, of course, so that PPF can be installed here properly and around towards the side, removing the badges that you have just there as well for the panel that goes over the, uh, the quarter panel, the wings that you have out here. The paint protection film itself, which is prepared in advance, the templates that have been created, adjusted and made perfect here at Topaz. Those are plotted out so there are no blades that go towards the car so that this can be applied properly using the correct methods. And then we're gonna have the car that will be protected against stone chips, light scratches, other road incidents, things that happen as we've seen in the past. The first panel has had some prep. It now gets the slip solution, which forms the base effectively for the back rolled protection film to then be applied. And it's amazing always to see exactly how this works because you go from obviously the painted panel and the film that you can't quite equate to how that's going to work, but it's been made to completely work with these shapes, with these edges, with these curves, and ultimately completely vanishes on the surface, but gives you that layer of protection that should anything happen, effectively you can just replace it and I've experienced the benefits of that myself many times in the past but it's always fun to watch and see a little bit of this process especially on a color as vibrant as this is that's the last you sit here you can see the blue parts inside the lights but effectively this will get back rolled into position using a bit of fixed solution to hold it in place and then worked and maneuvered completely into place to eventually settle down and vanish from sight over that panel. It's actually important to both spray beneath and over the top to prevent getting any scratch marks from the squeegees in the application process. So obviously at this stage, a lot of slip solution used absolutely everywhere to help with maneuvering it for the first part of fixed solution will go at a pinch point effectively to hold it into place, squeegeeing out the excess liquid as you can see here. This is the beauty of working with pre-made templates that it can start to be applied knowing the exact process. In fact, in this case, working straight on this after doing an M4 before, so similar uh, type of setup. It really is like magic working around using the different shapes. Of course, with the arches here, you've got curves in multiple different directions, but effectively the material is set up for this purpose like I said, will completely disappear when all is said and done. You won't be able to see anything remaining from this being done. It will just settle down into place and completely vanish, which I always find so incredible and kind of mesmerizing to watch. I know we've seen many parts of the process before, but it's always as fascinating as it was the first time. And just like that, the first panel on the M3 has been fitted, a very swift operation. All of the edges have been tucked in, everything neatly positioned. Of course, later on, those parts will come back on as well. But to give you a quick summary of what's going on to this car, we'll have the bonnet, we have the wings, we'll have the whole of the front bumper, including the gloss black parts, we'll have the side sills, we'll have the mirror caps, and then we'll also do the rear bumper, as we have in some of the other Shmimobiles, to protect from any damage back here. And of course, vulnerable areas like back here where you get stones being flicked up from the rear tires. So it shouldn't take all that long and we'll see a good amount of this going down today. Also, be sure to check these out. The designs that we have to go along with M3 arriving on the channel over in the Cheers by Shmi150 store. I know a lot of you guys are big fans of the generation style. I am too. We've got these and a number of others available as t-shirts, hoodies and more. So check those out over in the Cheers by Shmi150 store. I'll pop the link down below to go and see more about those. Fast forward a moment, this panel is now on and it is time to approach the bumper. So as you can see, this has been sprayed with slip solution to make sure that when the material is back rolled, it's all gonna be able to slide straight into place. But of course, this requires multiple components due to the complexities of the different shapes, the way it goes inside itself, obviously the air curtain going around towards the side. And obviously this will also go around both of the kidney grills underneath effectively the number plate plaque with things like the 360 cameras that you have at the front being left. Obviously everything like the logo, the badge, the BMW logo on the bonnet has been removed, so that's out of the way. But yeah, your progress already happening here with the M3. Exactly as I was saying, this is not an easy panel. As you can see, the way it doubles back on itself with all the different parts, and then again around here towards the center, it is a very, very complex template to make the entirety of the front bumper all of these different pieces, all of the predefined cutouts, obviously for the parking sensors, and for the towing eye up front as well. And the way even here, for example, that it tucks back in underneath itself, 
very, very complicated. One important thing here with the template is to start right from the very center, lining it all up to make sure that it fits perfectly when you then work it out towards the sides. So in this case, from the very top, put the badge uh, on the top of the bumper there, as I was saying, working then from there out towards the edges, but obviously again, templated, so it will fit everywhere perfectly naturally. The headlights will also get film on them also, by the way, to prevent them from getting cracked or damaged. The fixed solution will hold this in place. Now to work from the center all the way out around towards the edges. More very quick progress then here at the front bumper. And I was also just noticing the aero piece down here, this plastic part, which of course is all to do with the aero profile that you have out towards the sides underneath the front bumper. And meanwhile, if we come around towards the back, the rear bumper has also been fitted. It's always a bit of a challenge to try and work out what's already got PPF on it and what doesn't when it's installed, because you literally cannot see, you cannot tell. But the whole of this part, as you can see, has been finished. It's just waiting for the final wrap around and tucking in of all of the edges. Nice, very, very quick progress on this. This is going really, very, very well. The guys are making some quick work out of applying the PPF to the M3, but I'm gonna leave it there for the time being. We've seen it go through the wash bay. We've seen a bit of the process of the PPF being installed, but I'm hoping to pop back out to come and see it when it's effectively completed, but also to see this something very special that might be here in the very near future. For now though, great to see behind the scenes. A big thanks to the team here at Topaz. I clearly need to go and let my voice have a little bit of a break. So thank you very much for watching as always guys. And that's it for this time. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.